Hi there. Thanks very much for tuning in. So I want to talk today about Open Foam on AWS with Graviton2. So my name is Neil Ashton and I'm Principal CFD Specialist Solution Architect at AWS. Uh, and I first of all want to say a special thanks to Carfic, uh, who also works here at uh, AWS as a HPC Solution Architect, uh, and, and Ollie, who works at, at ARM, for their you know collaboration on this effort. It, it's, it's actually probably those two who should be speaking here today, um, but uh, nevertheless, I, I hope this will be interesting for you. Um, so first of all, please uh, go and listen to my colleague Stephen Sachs' talk, uh, which is probably going to be much more interesting uh, than this one for most people, and it's about moving HPC workloads onto AWS uh, and Graviton2. So please jump over and listen to that. It's in the same playlist channel. Um, so I wanted to talk today just very briefly about you know the things that we've been doing with CFD and Graviton2. Uh, and I just kind of wanted to take a very brief moment to say that, you know, the whole um, industry, you know, whether it's automotive or aerospace or manufacturing is going about this big change at the moment, designing these great electric cars and electric aircraft to drive, you know, if, if improvements in efficiency and reduce emissions. Uh, and, uh, you know, the tried and tested way to do it at the moment is um, using wind tunnels. You know, um, that's kind of the default CFD is used, but wind tunnels are used a lot because they're much more trusted, um, but they're expensive and they can often cause delays in terms of production because you've got to, you know, design this thing, then you're going to go and manufacture it, make it, take it to a wind tunnel, blow the air over this car, plane or city, and then decide is it good or not. Um, now, of course, the idea with CFD is that you don't need any manufacturer and that you can just you know, solve these Navier-Stokes equations in hopefully a much cheaper and faster fashion than you can by doing some you know, manufacturing taken to a wind tunnel. But of course, the question is, is it accurate? I'm not going to go into that bit here, uh, but I will say that the accuracy is absolutely linked to the HPC cost. Uh, and typically, CFD is HPC hungry. It's a tightly coupled application. Um, but... If we want to just use more and more HPC so we can get more and more accurate CFD to reduce you know, wind tunnel usage, for example, and help companies or researchers to you know, develop new products, um, the problem we often get is that people are stuck in their HPC queues. You know, uh, I had it, uh, I'm sure many of you have it, that you're stuck in a queue to submit your job, whether you're in the university or industry. Uh, or you've run out of disk space. You know, I used to get emails all the time from sysadmin saying, please delete some disk space. So obviously, uh, you know, the AWS angle is that we would like you to not have those bottlenecks and so move from the model on the left, of kind of a fixed size to the model on the right, uh, where you can just elastically scale. Um, now, of course, you know, we like to um, say that we have the broadest and deepest platform voice, which is which is true. You can see there's uh, a huge range of different um, instance types. Um, but I wanted to focus today, of course, on the Graviton2. Uh, and I think Stephen and his talk did a good job of talking a little bit about the evolution from the first Graviton to the Graviton2. Um, but I wanted to focus in particularly on its use for OpenFoam. Now, OpenFoam is a popular open source CFD code uh, and uh, I want to show you how that specifically has been used. Uh, and this is the work that Karthik uh, and Ollie and I have been doing in this, on this front. Um, and I wanted to summarize first just in a kind of single instance. Why, why does this matter? Well, this is an example of running a OpenFoam benchmark tutorial, the motorbike case for anyone who's uh, used to using OpenFoam, 4 million cells. And this is the runtime in hours to run it for 5,000 iterations. No modification to tutorial other than the mesh increase. This is just being compiled basically out of the box. Um, you know, if you uh, look, uh, I'll present it in a moment. Uh, Ollie has done a great job of showing how simple it is to compile open foam on ARM. Uh, and we simply just follow those instructions. And we're using V1912, so you literally don't have to do anything. You can actually just use the GCC compiler um, if you want to, because that actually is just no mods whatsoever. Um, this is the single node performance. So you can see we've got a range of instance types from our C5N, which is a kind of Intel Skylake. We've got the C6G. So this is the obviously the Graviton2. Um, then we've got a range of other AMD and Intel instances of varying ages and flavors. Um, given this is a very brief talk, I won't go into to all of it. 
what I'll simply show you is that our users have a clear choice on the sort of instance type they use. Now you can scan across this graph and you can see that the C524 x large, so Intel Cascade Lake, uh, actually give us the fastest runtime uh, for a single node test. Uh, of course, these have different core counts, uh, memory bandwidth, but these are the, the choice that the end user has when they pick a full instance type. Um, but what's interesting is, of course, then if you look at the price, uh, and these are just the on-demand public pricing, um, you can see a very different story. That now, yes, the C524X Large was the fastest, but it's not the cheapest. Uh, and the cheapest is the C6G, 16X Large. Uh, and this is why we were writing a blog um, to, to demonstrate this. If you Google the AWS Open Foam Arm, uh, hopefully that blog will come up. Uh, and you can see how it is worked to say, hey, actually, if you care about price performance, uh, then by far the winner is the, the Graviton 2. Now, this is just a single node test, but what about in a multi-node? Well, we actually used uh, AWS Parallel Cluster to do this. And again, Stephen talks about it in his talk, uh, where we can just simply create a cluster, uh, whether it's x86 or ARM, uh, and then just spin up um, the, the cluster, jump on, install OpenFoam, uh, and get running. Uh, and this is a kind of a, you know, an example script that uh, you can take. Uh, and again, I encourage you to watch Stephen's uh, talk on that. Uh, but essentially what we saw was that um, here we have a scaling of a 222 million cell case. So not 4 million, but much bigger. Uh, this is like a full industrial size case. And yes, the C5N, the Intel Skylake with EFA scales out you know, really well. The lack of EFA on the C6G 16X large uh, does mean that you don't get as good scaling, uh, although it, that's similar to the C524X large that also doesn't have uh, EFA. Um, but what you see is that still the price performance, even for a very large case, even on multi-node, and even with the C6G, uh, C6G without EFA, still gives you a considerable reason to use it. Uh, and so again, this is why we wrote the, the blog post um, to, to kind of highlight the fact that, you know, if you're running open foam, then you should absolutely consider the C6G or of course the M6G if you need higher memory uh, or the R6G to, to run your open phone cases because we really feel that you can get you know a, a very similar performance, okay, maybe not as fast, um, but you can get a really good cost per, uh, per simulation. Uh, and for many people, this is actually the most uh, important thing. So um, what about a couple, I'm gonna have a couple of quick ways to do it. Well, how about collaborations? Well, you could just spin up an EC2 instance or parallel cluster for multi-node. Jump on install open foam and run your cases. You could then save it as an Amazon machine image and just share that with your collaborators. Share it with their account ID, or if you really wanted to, you could make a community uh, image out to that. So anyone can just jump in and use your installation. Uh, they could therefore jump in and have exactly the same setup as you. Uh, and of course, that's better than just pulling it from Git and installing the code. You can even have exactly the same operating system and environment, which really reduces the kind of uncertainties or differences between. You can replicate uh, or repeat other people's work. Of course, you can also do real-time collaborations because you could spin up an EC2 instance or parallel cluster, install OpenFoam, and then just share access to your collaborators, let's say via SSH keys, uh, or um, you could then work in it, you know, in a joint uh, academic project, let's say. Uh, this is really the power, I think, of AWS, that you can also collaborate in those sort of ways. So, um, yeah, hopefully I just wanted to show you very briefly some of the work that we've been doing uh, in looking at OpenFoam and ARM. This is just the start. There's lots of very exciting stuff uh, coming up. So please uh, stick around and kind of uh, wait for that. Um, and, uh, and yeah, hopefully a couple of quick ways that you can enable some real-time collaborations with colleagues um, using AWS, OpenFoam, and the Graviton2 instances. So with that, uh, thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the ARM HPC talks.